what all this is about, at least to some extent, I put here, not entirely correct, but uh, in a reasonable way under the term of elasticity and restrictions. Meaning, if we look at this circle, there are certain alternatives we have, and I put them under elasticity in terms of availability of, uh, as a, of, a, of a strategic reserve, of a minimum needed. There is a certain minimum needed, and we talked about it in, in terms of elasticity directly, of the different forms, we will come back to this, but there is a certain minimum needed of capital, of investment, of GDP production, of this traffic system, to allow an economy to work, to run. Then you would have strategic reserves as well as a matter of being able to look for alternatives and to look for different ways. In this context, it means some things go by the market and there is not really much about alternatives and some things you can do in other ways. Another point we talked about is hugely important in this context as well. It's a different uh, products, different goods, including the common pool resource. This is part of the alternatives we have. Some things we have to buy on the market as private goods. Some things are common pool resources or public goods. The three, this plays a role as well. But looking at health and health services, for instance, we have different solutions to it. It may be part of the common pool resources. The general knowledge in a society telling you this is good for you, you eat this, drink this. I'm occasionally surprised how wide this knowledge is going out with somebody. Uh, actually, this is very good for or against this and that. The, in, in this way, it's a common pool resources. You can, can pick up the fruit somewhere. It, is, it may be there without the market, without anything. Everybody knows going for a walk, doing a little bit of exercise is good for you. So do it. Common pool resources. You don't have to pay, you don't have to go to the gym or whatsoever. Benefits, uh, groundwater, lakes, irrigation systems, fisheries, forests, the typical ones. And then you have the same can be organized as private goods. The forestry being there and you have to pay an entry fee. Or it's a public good, meaning there is a public body, municipality, communities, the state, central state, organizing it and taking care of it. Health system, you have the public hospitals, you have the private hospitals, and you have this kind of common knowledge, do this and that, pick these herbs, and this is good for you. It may be still that you have to buy the herbs, but the knowledge it is good for you in this case, or it is bad, don't do it. This is a kind of uh, common good. It's passed on from one person to, to another. So it is the question again, how do we produce and how do we consume, consume actually what we need. And now we come to this thing in concrete terms as a definition, GDP, what is actually in it. In it is exactly this market stuff. What is dealt with, what is produced for the market, and we are talking of, about, about the final market. 
whatever is an interim product, conditioned to move on, is not really of interest. We are talking about the final inputs and products, and it is an aggregate field. We are not looking at this, at the individual products, at the individual services, but we are looking at these huge boxes. We don't know what is in it, we don't mind what it is. We don't mind if it's the entire economy is only producing chairs or shoes. Of course it has a consequence, there is a difference. Or if it produces a wide range of different products. That means an aggregate figure. This way, it's an abstraction. The economic activities. Whatever is in it in concrete terms doesn't really bother us. It's not a In terms of categories, we are talking about the GDP equaling consumption. Now we are talking about the final consumption of us consuming whatever we consume, buying books, buying something to drink or to, to dress, investment, go to the firm, they are investing, and as such it is a final product for them, plus government spending, government as consumer, as household, and the net export. And this is important to keep this in mind, the net export, we come back to it later, because it is as well about what is produced here, where we are active as domestic economy, but exporting or producing basically for a foreign market. Net export means we relate this to what we don't produce, but we use, we go, or what goes into our, um, into our consumption, into our investment. As I said earlier, there is this tendency that this entire system depends on, or there is one condition of the system, it has to grow. There is, in this concept, no point in just replacing things. The idea is it has to grow, it has to change. For whatever reason, nobody is happy if we have this line, straight line of GDP development. It develops. This goes on, producing, reproducing what we have. We always want to go for this, and the reason is, whatever reason it is, what I said before, is that only then we gain. With this we don't gain anything, we just replace. Here we gain as more as we grow, as faster as we grow, as more as we grow, uh, as, as, as better it is. Uh, the idea is this imminent law, one speed, whatever we do, it is faster. Be faster than before. Build cars that are faster, even if we cannot drive them, because traffic can be true. Build computers that are faster than the previous generation, even if we don't need them really. Everything should be faster. If it comes to destination of trade, of holidays or whatever, go further away. Stay at home is, is not useful. Go make holidays, I don't know, in Beijing or in the neighboring village, fine. As far, as, uh, as, as further as you go, this is the ultimate goal of the system. Because it is more value in terms of market production. 
one measure larger. There is one thing with it. If we look at our mobile phones at computers, they are getting smaller and smaller. So why do I say larger? Because there is more and more in it. In this way, they are getting larger. This is the decisive thing. Abs uh, phenomena, appearance, they look smaller and smaller, and essentially they are larger and larger. One goal, and this is more. More production, more of everything. A technical thing, business inventories built up unexpectedly or for, uh, for, um, or drain unexpectedly is important. It's not part of the GDP. Basically, it's taken out of the circle, of the economic circle. This is the decisive thing. Again, this point made by Amartya Sen in 1993 and this shows the development. We have to know these figures, we have to know what it is. And for a long, long time, I said they had been just carried on without really understanding them. There had been discussions, they had been marginalized, nobody really paid attention. And then, I don't know actually when uh, he got this, but he got the prize of the Swedish Reichsbank for economy, so-called Nobel Prize for economics. I don't know, as I said, when it was, but his, his idea is basically we have to look at or, or accept this, uh, this fact that opportunity freedom cannot be sensibly judged merely in terms of possessions of commodities, but must take note of the opportunity of doing things and achieving results one has reason to value. Utility function I mentioned, this is about what do we value? What is the value of an economy? What is the value of a process of production of any of economic activities, privately or uh, and individually or societally and socially? This is decisive and we have the alternatives. We can use different ways how to achieve them. Again, individually or in the society. This has to be clear as basis. To understand then the technic technicalities and ask as such, uh, answer some, some difficult questions. Namely, how many apples and bananas fit into a shoe? This is now a difficult. Of course, it depends on the size of the shoe, on the size of the apples and bananas, and if you really stuff them there and press them into the shoe, or if they should be more or less fluid. So this is the <coughs> appearance level. I don't think you get much into it. But the idea is the imaginary, uh, imaginary economy of Ocadia, total production is four apples and six bananas. To find the total output of Ocadia, we would add the number of apples and conclude that total output is 10 pieces of fruit. That's simple. So we have something in common there. But what if this economy produced three pairs of shoes? I never tried it, but I trust you won't be able to eat shoes, and if, they, if you try it, they won't be as fruitless. Suppose, though, that we know what the apples sell for uh, 25 cents each, bananas for 50 cents each, and shoes for 20 uh, euro a pair. Then the market value of this economy's production, or its GDP, is equal and then you have this looking for the minimum common denominator, 
we are not looking at the goods. We are looking at the aggregate and calculating, constructing it, if you want, as a matter of the price. So, it's about 64 euro. I just see, I think I took it from somewhere from the textbook, but I see the figures are confused here. Uh, in the 106, but it doesn't matter. The, the idea is don't look at the individual products, but look at how you can find a common denominator. As I said, with fruit, it's fine. Apples, bananas, that's fruit. You can live with that, even if there's a difference as well. But you cannot live with the concept of shoes equal fruit. In this way, it matters what we are looking at, how we define the products, the process of production, or the economic activity. Now we come to a concept that is important as well, but as it is not as important as the GDP in general matters, the GNP. So the one we know, consumption, investment, government spending, net export. I said it before, it's the net export. It's not just the export, but as well we calculate this, we relate this to what goes into the country. How much do we export? How much do we import? And what is left as export? You see already here the idea exporting more is good. Because this is the idea of growth. If you import import more than you export, this has a negative effect. You depend on others. So this is important when it comes to it. export is good for the economy, even if we lose the products in terms of we cannot use them anymore. It's lost. They are gone to another country. GNP is then the GDP plus the net income flow from assets abroad or net income receipts. This is uh, exactly the question of what happens with what is produced here or in another country. Who is the owner? Where do we put this? Who is the owner, including where do we pay taxes? So, including the net income flow from assets abroad, or net income receipts, what we get out of it, and deducting the net payment outflow to foreign assets. This is about foreign direct investment. Where does the money go that we earn with, the, with what had been invested in the other country? And it is about where do we pay taxes, where does basically the result, the monetary or the value result, uh, remain. Again, this point of aggregate spending. It is important to keep this in mind, to keep this highlighted permanently. We are not talking about the individual products. We are not talking about individual process of production then we will fail, if we try it even, we will fail to understand and fail to, to, to calculate the GDP. Now there is a question around it. Usually we take the GDP as a measure on the national level, on the domestic level. And usually we take it per year. We relate it to the year. We calculate the growth rate of GDP for the year. 
now you find, especially there, increasingly the orientation, what is this month's rate? But it is as well sometimes explicitly done that we are talking about the GDP, for instance, of different provinces here in, in China. And there are huge differences. So it's again about aggregate spending. We are looking at the GDP rate in China. And then we go in the next step to say, what does it actually mean for province Zhejiang or province Hunan or whichever. There are huge differences. At the end of the day, we may uh, end up with something like uh, 6.5. I think that's around the range currently. At the same time, you have some areas where it's probably still about 12% and some areas where it is, I don't know, 2% or even less. It is as well where we can construct something and say we are talking about the aggregate spending or we are calculating the contribution then to the GDP of this and that sector. Heavy industries, chemicals, chemistry industry, chemical industry, uh, services, whatsoever. This is important to understand what actually this GDP as aggregate means. And it means as well the final product to be able to distinguish two cars of the same year the same model and make the same everything. A car is not always a car. Or is it? So the question is, as I said, it is about the final product. If I use the car for further production, if it is a means of investment, it is different. If I use it as a final piece of consumable, it has a different status than the very same car has when it goes into the further process of production or into the process of further production. This is with your private home computer and the computer you may use in the office. They may be exactly the same, but their position in the economic process is a different one. If you followed in thinking what I said, you may see immediately some problematic of this GDP, of the conceptualization, uh, that goes beyond we leave something out that is as well about for instance, this absurd idea of a car crash is good for the economy. If you have a car, if you crash it, you will probably not say, ah, right, I made a contribution, that's good. Environmental damage, and then we talk a little bit about carrots and ants. Let's first look at further point of definition, namely, what does genuine if you go to this one textbook, you know you have two textbooks. The one is the core on the internet, the other is the copy, many of you have at least. To page 40, 442, you find this of talking about Mary as a single mother who does not work and depends totally on unemployment or other benefits. Does not work means is not in employment. As will be explained later in this chapter, payments such as unemployment benefit are not counted as part of GDP because no service is provided in return. Exchange on the market. Mary will, of course, spend a lot of time looking after her children. Of course, it's Mary and not the husband or whatever role cliches always play a role. Mary. But this work is unpaid and not counted as part of GDP. Hence, Mary contributes nothing to the official measure of GDP because it does not happen on the market, what she does. 
Suppose Mary finds a job at 500 euro per week and pays a child minder 200 per week to look after her children. All right, different story. As conventionally measured, this adds 700, 500 for Mary, 200 for child minder uh, to GDP, Mary's income plus the child minder's income. However, the child minder has taken over Mary's previous unpaid work, which was not counted as part of GDP, and the total supply of child minding services has not increased. The same is done, more or less the same is done to the child. Only different people do it, and these people have a different status. The one getting paid as part of an employment position, the other did it as mother. Hence, while Mary's job represents a genuine increase in GDP, this is a real increase of an economic activity. Paying the child minor does not. It simply transfers activity from the unpaid to the paid sector. It's a question of definition. It is important as well to understand what actually happens in this economic process on the societal level what is seen, what is defined as being relevant, and what is not. As I said, we have these absurdities, we have these things where we immediately say, intuitively say, this is not good. Emission of an enterprise, we know it, we see it somewhere, air, um, that the quality of air is depending as well on this. And of course, on your private use of energy, using the car for driving 100 meters just to get cigarettes, smoking, additional pollution, then driving 100 meters back with the car, it's not really good. So, again, pollution. Then we have some accidents, possibly, or somebody just dumps the, the, the stuff somewhere. Let's assume this is toxic. Again, of course, it is not good. And something we cannot really influence, at least not completely, the natural disasters, they happen. We can protect something but several things we cannot avoid happening. All this is good when we look at it from the perspective of GDP, of economic productivity. Two reasons here. Something is produced, and we are interested in what is produced, not in how it is produced, and the second thing may be that there are filters built in, which then again are additional products. So you have cleaner environment, better conditions, but even this contributes to the overall economic process. You have, and then we come to a kind of difficult point here, you stop using the car, which is bad for the economy, or you build in certain filters there. Now, what you do with the old cars? So sometimes you have to think as well, is it worthwhile to invest in certain measures of protection, or does this actually cause more trouble because we have to look after the waste? The problem is really there, start early, avoid causing trouble instead of looking for a way to limit it or to reduce, the, uh, to, to look at the consequences, to look at the repair. This is important when it comes to all these measures of environmental protection, of behavior, consumer behavior, and that. What do we do and what is useful? What is useful for what? 
difficult decisions. This is not really a difficult decision. Don't throw things away, especially not just dump them wherever you want. Look for it in a proper way. The good thing is, though, somebody has to clean it up. Somebody has to clean it up, not only what you see here, but as well what is going into the groundwater. I have had once a damage, a water damage in the house. This is terrible. But it's good for the economy. Fortunately, I have been insured. But it was good for the economy. All the repair of the house, water going into the walls, it's not just cleaning up. If you spill something in the, on the kitchen floor, in the bathroom, this is a serious damage. The cars that may be affected there, just buy a new one. Good for the economy. So in this way, we have these ambiguities in many cases where we say, yes, in economic terms, looking only at the GDP is good. Even there, it's questionable. And we have to think about the long-term effect. Because, of course, this damages the potential for future settlement of industries, if or certain industries, if you have bad conditions. If you have a dangerous area, and you just say, yeah, fine, we, we just repair, repair, repair. This is a problem as well to get people there to settle. Now, this is a car, right? The accident, I'll tell you later why I've, I've been choosing this car, an accident, a car crash, is good for the economy. You have to repair it, get it repaired, or you have to replace it, which is good. Just crash your cars every day. All the car manufacturers will be glad. You can sell new cars. All the garages, yeah, repair it, come on. Come on. You, you, I missed you a day. May, it didn't make income. Now go for an expensive car. When living in Rome, it was always funny. I was always overtaking these cars. Very fancy, very, very fast. And standing in the traffic jam, but I was walking and had been fast or I was passing them with a scooter. It's always great fun. Way Ciao. But the point is really, of course, if you damage this car, if you are involved with this car in a car accident, the repair and the replacement is simply more expensive. And the idea is, it is a higher, it is a larger contribution to the economic process, to what is happening, what is created as value and what is contributing in this sense to the economy. Great thing. Don't go for small things. Just if you damage something, do it properly and do something, select something that is expensive. This contributes. Of course, it is a stupid idea. If you do it, you will cry or whatsoever, I don't know, but at least you will not be happy and say, yes, I contributed to the economy, I made my contribution. Now there is another dimension to it, a little bit of paradox, it's not really an absurdity, but to some extent it is. Over time, people have come, uh, have come to rely more on market-produced goods and less on goods that they produce for themselves. I mentioned that in the beginning, it's this process of commodification of more and more things going into the economic process as process of the market production, what is produced for the market. If you produce whatever you eat for dinner at home, 
It is okay, but not good for the market. It is okay still for the market because you have to buy the raw material, considering, assuming that you don't have your garden and your own animals that you are uh, then bringing to your table. But this is deducted. On the one hand, you have the contribution, the goods you buy, the ingredients. At the same time, the service of the restaurant is not part of it. So we buy goods on the market, services on the market, or as well, we buy, we get more and more uh, ready-made meals. And it's not only for the lazy people uh, like myself, not doing it for myself, but it is what we all do. Easily. We buy, for instance, peanuts, but already just there to eat, in the plastic bag. Or not in the plastic bag, we put them in the plastic bag. There is a service involved doing this. Not that in the shop, but that you don't have to open the nut. You don't have to crack it anymore. It's something very common we do every day, kind of. Things like this, where is a service involved, where there is something marketable, and now it is here. One reason being, for example, busy people with high incomes, this is important, rather than cleaning their own houses, hire people to clean their houses, and the question is, what does this do to the GDP? Now, there are different dimensions to it, and there are different points we can think about. We can go back to Mary and the genuine GDP. And let's first think about this point of GDP is close to fall. This is not exactly Mary, but basically there is something happening, somebody spends money, somebody is employed, but actually cleaning is not really a good word. So let's just forget it. Let's get it out of the way and think it's fall which is, of course, not true, not the case. And it's only that we have to be aware of when, when thinking about GDP, measuring, calculating GDP, we have to look at all options. And there are very different options. The one, of course, it's no change. Just the same. The one we always love to see is increasing, increasing GDP. And the other we don't like to see is decreasing. Now, as we will see, and as we saw already to some extent, this increasing and decreasing can have different, or can take different forms as well. On the one hand, we have a more or less steady, steady development, up or down. But we can have, as well, huge jumps, and then whatever a further increase or a leveled development. If you go back to the Kondratiev waves, you see why I say this. There have been huge jumps at some stage due to the introduction of a new technology. There's always a huge jump when whichever enterprise 
gets a new model on the market. And in many cases, we are not really, or to a limited extent, aware of what happens. But then sometimes you read in the newspaper, especially our, our designer friends from Apple, who produce something that is as good as anything else, uh, or any other computer and, and stuff. People are queuing. I didn't know this before I read this the first time. In the, I, I couldn't even imagine it. People are queuing the night before to be the first in the shop to get the new model. Which means they sell basically the first weeks or something a huge amount of these phones. And then it slows down until the next model comes, and then you have this jump again. It's the same with technology. If there is a new technology, it has a major effect on the entire economic activity in terms of production. And then you have the steady growth, or you have a steady decline. And all this you have to keep in mind and you have to consider. So there is this option of a stable development. Because if you look at it, what happens? They are still eating. No, was it eating or cleaning? The, in terms of the product, in terms of the use value, it's still the same. Nothing changed. Yeah, it was clean. The house is clean. It doesn't matter who, who does it. So why should the GDP change under this condition of buying it on the market? We are looking at what we always forget to do. And I always said, important is the use value. This is what really matters. We shouldn't think about the exchange value. Important is the use value. And the use value is a clean accommodation. It doesn't change. So in consequence, we can say there's not, no, it, it doesn't cause any change in GDP. But then we go back from here to the difference on the second slide or something of different areas of subsistence production, exchange, and the market production. Then the thing looks different. We are not talking about the use value. This plays a secondary role. It is condition, but it is not more than condition. So we are actually interested in something else, and this is the exchange value. This is the decisive thing when it comes to GDP. But still, as I said, the use value is relevant. And of course, it is a question of quality. If the quality of the cleaning is much better in this one case of I do it myself, or if it is better in the other case that somebody who is actually professional does it, this matters. So this is something we have to link the two dimensions of it. On the one hand, exchange value. This is, of course, what we are interested in. And at the same time, the quality. What do we get for paying this and that amount? This matters. Perhaps. <laughs>